So this is um, Fontana Dam, which is uh, along the AT, and it's the place where you see the Fontana Hilton. I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but I'm gonna come, I'm gonna show you. It's the biggest shelter, I think, on the AT. It has running water. Um, it has a uh, um, charging station. It's a solar station to charge your phone. And just um, then there's the camping area right here where I've got my hammock set up up there on the hill. And then um, there's a bathroom with showers just just over there a little ways. So it's uh, they call it the Fontana Hilton. And um, we're just kind of glamping here for uh, the evening because we're going to start off bright and early on the Benton Mackay Trail. And um, I'm just sitting here in my uh, camp chair. And of course, I'm knitting. <laughs> this, this sock is, uh, I've been knitting two identical socks and I'm almost done. And it's kind of a project that I do slowly. I don't want it to go fast because I need, I need something small that I can put in my backpack. Here's the sign for Fontana Hilton and a little glimpse inside the shelter shelves where people put their their uh, gear and it's it's really big. Here's a nice view of Fontana Lake. And then there's a fire pit trash cans, another place to eat. This is truly a Hilton shelter. <laughs> so we went over the dam into the Smoky Mountains National Park, got on the Benton Mackay Trail, the section that's called the Lakeshore Trail. We went through about 12 miles the first day to the community of Proctor. There's a house there that was built in the 1920s that's abandoned when they flooded the valley to make hydroelectric power for the uh, war effort, 1942, World War II. There's a lot of plants um, and little pe peeking through. There's chimneys and foundations and rosebush that I'm sure someone planted a long time ago and broken down trucks that were just left after uh, the people had to evacuate. And I like how other hikers have found little bits and laid them along the trail. Okay, so this looks like a bird's nest, right? On the ground, it fell. Look at the black lining. This must be bear hair. We were all agreed that that's what it is. We took a vote. So that's what bear hair looks like. So that's the most you'll see of any bears, but I did see a bear. Uh, I didn't have time to take a video because I was just astounded and trying to make noise to get it to go away. But um, something really neat happened on this trip. Besides the bear we had some magic. It was trail magic. If you've ever had it happen to you, we had somebody come and the next the morning after we woke up, she made us breakfast on a propane stove that she brought in on her backpack. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you for boating in and cooking for us. Hey, I have a trail report. I did a, a repair on this little gadget here. This is what um, is my drawstring stopper. And there didn't used to be a knot there. I'm not sure why. I don't know if I let it undid it or they just didn't have one. So while I was um, opening it, it slipped out. I should have taken a picture when that happened. Um, so I tried sticking it in with a stake, the pointy end of a stake to get it back in and it, it was just not gonna work because it was too narrow. So guess what I used? Knitting needle pulled it through, pulled the loop through the other side, and it was, now, it, now it's fixed. Walking through a forest of blooming mountain laurel. It's got such a neat look to it. It's hard to see because the sun's coming up, but it's all blooming all along here. Just like a tunnel of mountain laurel. Okay, here we are. We're in sort of the a very remote part of Fontana. I can't tell you what creek this is, but it's, uh, it's a nice place. And there's 
some people here with coolers, so I don't know how, they must have boated in. Um, and they're camping over there in that clearing with children, so I know they didn't hike here because this is take, this is about 20 miles in on the Lakeshore Trail, maybe about 23. And this is day three, we're gonna catch up with our shuttle up ahead in about, I don't know, maybe three hours. So I still got a bit of hiking in front of me. It was a beautiful three-day trip with some fun people. And at the end, we walked down the trail to nowhere and went through the tunnel that's there, ended up at Nolan Creek and got a shuttle. Okay, so much for hiking. Now we're here for the knitting portion. I'm Judy and we're in my backyard today. I uh, got a lot of flowers. I thought it would be nice to have it out here because I broke my ring light, so I need natural lighting. So, uh, plus it's just beautiful. There might be a dog. The neighbor's dog was barking at me a little bit, but if I don't move the chair or make any sudden movements, we should be okay. <laughs> so, uh, I have something really interesting to show you. Um, when I was backpacking, or whenever I go backpacking, I use a, uh, a very lightweight pot. So, for those of you who backpack, this is a titanium pot. Uh, MSR. It's had a lot of good use. It's a little warped on the bottom, but it's a really, really good pot. Very light. Don't know the weight, but it's light. <clears throat> a lot of people use these integrated systems with, uh, uh, you know, a wind thing, but it, it's heavy and this is very light. So um, I made something for it because <clears throat> the way I do my pot is I have this little it's, it's a little, it's like a, a koozie for my um, dehydrated meals that are in a plastic bag. But <clears throat> I store everything in here when I'm on the trail. And this is my stove. <clears throat> this attaches to the, the fuel canister. And then it folds down very small. I don't remember what this weighs, but I have a spreadsheet. It is very light. So this goes canister, stove, uh, lighter, <clears throat> and then the lid. This fits really well in my backpack, but you know, it's going to pop off and everything's going to go all over. So I made a cover for it years ago and uh, I improved on that cover. I used crochet this time and I made a netted bag. This is my second version of it, but so. I was uh, on the Ben and McKay trip that's at the beginning of this video. And uh, there was another person who was using a similar setup, but instead of a, a bag, he had rubber bands and tape holding his lid on. So when he saw this, he was impressed. So I made him one. Uh, this is about 10 grams, including this stopper here. So it's, it's pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> a pretty good way to carry this. And uh, this is some kind of nylon yarn that I got at a recraft center in Greenville. I'll talk about them again sometime soon. That's a whole other story. Uh, so that's my latest. And I'm going to put a how-to video about how to make this because I think um, those of you who do backpack or if you know a backpacker, find out the diameter and make a little uh, drawstring netted bag. And I have some basic instructions I'm going to post on Ravelry. And I'll also um, put a link to a, a very rudimentary how-to video uh, that if you already know how to crochet, you could, you could do it. So, um, so that's my latest crochet project. Um, as far as knitting, I don't know if I've showed you this before. This is a uh, Hido Fude, I think it's called. It's a Japanese pattern. And um, it's kind of a clever construction where I think the name translates to brush stroke. So it's in one brush stroke without leaving the paper. So there's no, except if you have a knot in your yarn or something, there's no uh, changing yarn. It's all knit in a continuous piece. It's hard to explain. So the reason it changes color is I used a color uh, yarn. It's called a, um, uh, it's a, the, the name of the yarn is called Whirl, and it looks like a cake. Uh, I don't have any handy. Well, I have one here that's um, half used for a different project and a much brighter color. So, um, 
but that's what I used for this. And it, so it's a cotton acrylic blend. It's great for the summer, nice for sitting outside in the evenings or in the air conditioning. And uh, it just stays open. I don't have a button, but you can, you can wrap it and if you're cold. I made a version of this in wool, but this is the one I made in cotton and I, I really like it. And I like this yarn so much. Um, I came up with something uh, that's crocheted, not knit. And I've got a little bit here to show you. Here's a square. This is about 15 or 14 inches square and uh, very nice and lightweight. And I don't know if she's watching, but Pam, if you're watching, um, this is for you. I had a wonderful uh, weekend at Pam's beach house in Florida and um, enjoyed her new pool and I wanted to make her something for her house and it's a uh, bunch of squares using this this color changing whorl yarn and uh, it's the beginnings of another square so I, I need nine squares so we're getting there but um, maybe Pam will see this maybe she won't if she sees it it won't be much of a surprise but uh, it's coming. It's probably going to take a couple months. <laughs> it's one of those long, long range projects. Um, another thing that I've been working on, of course, is the wedding shawl. This is, uh, it doesn't, it's not going to look like much when you see it. This is almost, I think, two or three complete cakes of this cobweb silk yarn. It's, it's very small. There's little glass beads. Um, it doesn't, I can't take it apart to show you because it's still on the needles, but it's getting, I'm very close. I'm at the, on the last page of four pages of directions. So I, it's very close. Uh, another thing I've been knitting, I'm going to have to insert a picture of it here. It's blocking right now. I'm wet blocking it. And it's made out of a cotton and merino wool, uh, fingering weight, lace weight, very, very small. It's a nice lightweight little uh, throw or, or little um, open front cardigan. And it's like a cropped blazer. And I think it would be a nice thing for, again, to put on in the evening or in the air conditioning. I think it's something I could even wear for work. So trying to remember the name of it. Oh, I know what it is, Whip It. Like, like the little Italian dog. They look like miniature Italian greyhounds. Um, so the Whippet is a, um, I'll have to insert who it's by, but it's a, it's a wonderful pattern. It's been around for a few years and I've had it in my queue to knit for years and I finally did it. It's blocking. Uh, I hope to take it with me on vacation and uh, I think it's a, something that I'll really wear and I, I like having things like that in my wardrobe, things that I've knit, but I can wear them for work or, or they're really a part of my, of my um, wardrobe. Not, not like just a scarf or a cowl or something, um, but a real garment. So uh, it's, my daughter was saying that pretty soon, every time she sees me, I'm gonna be wearing something I knit or crochet. And that is the goal. <laughs> that, that is what I wanna do. Uh, it's, it's a real conversation starter. I went to a party over the weekend and there was a, another woman there who knits and she was wearing a short sleeve shirt she had knit and I was wearing one I had and we looked at each other and it was like, yeah. I like that. I like when you meet another knitter and you're wearing something that you can show off. And even if it's not another knitter, don't you love when you're talking to someone and they say, oh, did you make that yourself? <laughs> yes, I did. So. <clears throat> so that's the goal, trying to have uh, enough things that I can wear something almost every day that I've knit. Memories from the Benton Mackay Trail, uh, before I forget, <laughs> I wanted to talk about that um, trail magic situation. Have you ever been out backpacking when that kind of thing happens? I, I've seen trail magic on the AT and since I've not been a through hiker, I always hang back and I don't want to take things. I'll let the through hikers take it. But this, this uh, occasion, the person was there for us, for our little group of eight people. And that's where, I mean, it was great. There was no worrying, did she have enough? Or I should let people who uh, have, don't have enough food maybe take something. 
but it was she had enough for everyone so it was um, really the best trail magic I've ever happened ever had happen and uh, thank you Miriam that was great and um, oh I've got another video that I'm editing um, but there's something I've promised you folks and I know this is late but I have a giveaway and the way I'm gonna do the giveaway um, is a little different first of all before I tell you what it is that I'm giving away uh, it's I'm not going to do it through YouTube because I've heard there's a lot of problems with um, scammers pretending that they're they're the the YouTube channel I think the best way to do it is um, to go on my Instagram account if you use Instagram if not it's free it's pretty easy to set up and it seems safe a lot of people use it and I have a channel called Judy the Knitting Hiker so if you go on Instagram and find Judy the Knitting Hiker uh, go on there and just respond to the post that I have uh, for the giveaway and just put your name and say that you're a subscriber and um, put the name that you're subscribed under so that I can make sure I've got subscribers so this is a little special giveaway for all the people who are subscribed to my channel it's a small group but it's growing so I wanted to um, just put my thanks out there with uh, something that I've made so I will insert that right here Ta -da! okay this is the giveaway uh, I'm going to do a random drawing of the people who are subscribed and post on Instagram that they want to be entered and it is a floppy sun hat that I've crocheted it's very lightweight you can pack it I took mine with me I, I have made two I took mine with me uh, to Florida when I went to Pam's house and had a, a really nice uh, experience at the airport because my luggage all fit into basically one carry-on plus my personal item so um, great summer vacation hat that I'm giving away and I think it's a one-size-fits-all it should fit most people um, but put your entry in on Instagram Judy the knitting hiker uh, look if you're a backpacker or if you know a backpacker who carries a some kind of a cooking pot make them or make yourself one of these um, drawstring bags to hold your pot closed uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel Judy the Knitting Hiker it is free and it helps um, the channel to be promoted so that we can get more subscribers and um, if you could interact by putting a comment or a thumbs up or both and one thing I would like to do is in my next video I'm going to answer some questions and if you have any questions you want me to answer on the next video, put it in the comments below so that I will uh, have some ideas of things you'd like to know about my hiking, my knitting, uh, uh, about what I do uh, and how I started my YouTube channel, anything. Anything you want, I'll pick some questions and I'll um, answer them on the next video. So be sure to put them in the comments below. Bye-bye.